In the next two lessons, we will look at the quantum Fourier transform as well as quantum phase estimation. These are both used within many quantum algorithms, including Shor's algorithm. Let's start with the quantum Fourier transform, or QFT. Before we look at the maths and circuit behind it, let's look at how it transforms states on the block sphere so we can gain some intuition. On the top, we have how we would normally represent a number in binary. As you can see, each of the qubits is either 0 or 1. And if we take those bits, we get the number. Then underneath, we have the same qubits after the quantum Fourier transform has been applied. As you can see, instead of encoding the numbers like we normally do in a classical computer with zeros and ones, the numbers are now encoded by the phase of the qubits that are in a uniform superposition. As you can see, the left qubit has two possible phase options, either 0 or negative 1 relative phase. Then the next qubit has four possible phase options, and so on, up until the last qubit, which has 2 to the n possible phase positions, where n is the number of qubits. In this case, the right qubit has 2 to the 3, or 8, possible phase options. Depending on the number, the phase of the qubits is different. Let's see how the number 5 is encoded once the quantum Fourier transform has been applied. As you can see, the right qubit has been rotated around the z-axis 5 over 8 times 2 pi radians, which is 5 pi on 4 radians. To get the amount rotated around the z-axis of the next qubit, we multiply the previous one by 2. So the next qubit has been rotated 2 times 5 over 8 times 2 pi radians. So rotating the qubit pi over 2 radians around the z-axis. The last one is 2 times that, which is 2 times pi over 2 radians. This means that if we have this state, which is 5 in binary, and we apply the quantum Fourier transform, we get this state. In the next lesson, we will see a use of the quantum Fourier transform, but for now, let's look at the circuit. Here is the quantum Fourier transform circuit for any number of bits. As you can see, there are two gates that we have not seen before. This gate here is a controlled R gate. We will define this gate with this matrix. As you can see, this gate has a variable k, which we can set and affects the phase applied. This gate transformed the basis state 0 into 0 and 1 into e to the 2 pi over 2 to the k, 1, giving us a relative phase if applied to a qubit in superposition. The controlled version, like we have in this circuit, is the same as all the other controlled versions of other gates, only applying the gate if the control is a 1. This other weird looking gate is called a swap gate, and it swaps the states of the two qubits. For this lesson, we will go through an example with three bits. For this example, we will use the state j as an input to the algorithm. We will label each one of j's bits like this, where each ji is either 0 or 1. To keep our equations tidy, we will look at each one of the qubits individually, then combine them at the end of the algorithm. Let's start with finding out what j0 becomes. After the Hadamard gate, the state becomes 1 on root 2, 0, plus negative 1 to the power of j0, 1. We can represent this like this, you will see why we keep the j0 divided by 2 and don't simplify the fraction at the end. Then we apply the controlled R2 gate with j1 as the control. We apply the R3 gate in the same way. Now let's find out what j1 becomes. After the Hadamard gate, the state becomes this state. Then after the controlled R2 gate, and simplifying like we did previously, we get this state. Lastly, we apply a Hadamard gate to the j2 qubit, leaving it in this state. So after this part of the algorithm, our state j is in this state. Now, once we swap the qubits, the state changes to this, and we're done with the algorithm. 
It may not seem like we did much, but we have in fact encoded the value of j into the phase of the qubits, just like we saw with the animation previously. Let's quickly check this by making j the value of 5, so 101 in binary. If we now input the values into the equations for the state, then we can see that the phases do match up to what we had previously discovered at the beginning of the lesson. If we were to apply the quantum Fourier transform to an arbitrary basis state j, we get 1 over root 2 to the power of n times the sum from k equals 0 to 2 to the n minus 1 e to the power of 2 pi i j k over 2 to the n k, where n is the number of bits in j. We also have the inverse quantum Fourier transform, and that undoes the quantum Fourier transform. So if we add this state, which is the state where we encoded 5 using the quantum Fourier transform, if we now apply the inverse quantum Fourier transform, we get back to our state 101 